And this guy is actually the real reason where Kobe got all his mental hacks and tricks. But one quote that's really good from this book, it goes, the second your mind says done, your instincts say next. You're listening to Off the Court, a show dedicated to making you the best version of yourself as an athlete and as a person. I'm Coach Jack, CEO and owner of Close the Gate Hoops. If you want to take your life and game to the next level, this is the podcast for you. Let's get it. What up, gatekeepers? It's Coach Jack again, back at you with another Close the Gate Hoops podcast off the court. Today, I got two of my buddies again with me. We've got Sam and Coach Aaron. How are you doing? <laughs> Jack, thanks for having me back. It's a pleasure. Of course. So a recap of last episode, episode four, Play As One. We have a lot of downloads collectively with all the episodes together, but we want to encourage you guys to keep listening to each episode to stay up to date with everything we're trying to teach you. Again, we want more critique. We're trying to work on our fluidity with how we talk to try and make it more natural. But again, that just comes with practice. And the more and more we do this, the better and better we're going to get. If you want to join the CTG family, don't be afraid to DM me or direct message any of us to tag along. We want as many people to join us as possible and build a community. If you haven't checked out our CTG Shooting Academy and you're trying to transform into an elite shooter, I strongly recommend you check that out. It's the perfect blend of the knowledge, the drills, and the mindset necessary to become an elite shooter. If you follow any of our social media pages at CTG Hoops, in the description, there's a link to a free secret video on how to transform into an elite basketball player. That's what transformed me into such a good basketball player, and that's what I use with all my students. If there was a secret sauce, I would tell you that's it. You have to become addicted to the grind. Today, what we're going to be talking about is the ability to go mind over body, so mental toughness. What does that entail? So a couple of things that I incorporate in all of my workouts with all of my students and things I preach over and over again, one of those concepts is called the wall. So whenever I have a student going through an extremely difficult drill mentally, normally that's a conditioning drill or a defensive drill where it's extremely hard on their lungs, the wall is this thing in your head where you want to stop. So say you're doing an extremely hard defensive drill and your brain's like, all right, let's be done. This is really hard. That's the wall in our head. So these numbers aren't necessarily true, but I use them as visuals for kids to understand. So think of the growth before the wall as times two multipliers. And then think you hit that wall when you want to be done. And the growth after the wall is times 10 multipliers. So my goal as a trainer is to get you as good as you can be as fast as possible. So I ask them, how do you get better fast? And after I tell them that stat, they'll be like, the reps after the wall. If you want to grow extremely fast, pushing through the point of no return where you think you can go farther than you actually could have, that's how you grow fastest. So next time you're doing an extremely difficult workout, think the wall, push through that wall every time something's that challenging. The second thing I'm always telling my students to do is visualization. So whenever they're doing a hard drill again, I tell them to visualize their success. So one of my students was doing our slide killers. It's one of our harder defensive drills that we do. And their goal as a basketball player, they're currently a sophomore in high school and they want to play for the Badgers, which I think they can definitely do because of how hard they work. So I tell them as they're doing those slides to imagine that they're in the Kohl Center. So while they're imagining they're in the Kohl Center doing these slides, they're visualizing their success. This stimulates and brings energy to our brain when we're doing this hard drill. And if we have more energy during this hard workout, we're going to be able to go even harder than what we were doing. So I always tell people to visualize success. Yeah, Jack, I just have a question. So what's something physically someone can do if they're getting to that wall and they're not necessarily getting over it and they have the right mindset but they're just physically not capable of continuing to push and give more effort so that's a great question there's actually a lot of things that i've tried a lot of it has to do with just taking your mind off what you're actually doing 
So one thing I know, what's the Hard Knocks guy? What's his name? Gruden? I don't know. The football coach, John Raiders. Gruden? Yeah, John Gruden. He's on a hard, he, he's the Raiders coach right now, right? Mm -hmm. So whenever he tells his players they're doing a hard drill, he'll tell them to count backwards from 100 from three. So it's like 100, 97, 94. It's basically just taking them their mind off the act of what they're doing. Another thing I'm doing, a lot of times I do this when I'm doing like ab exercises or say I'm doing a mile on the treadmill because you can set the pace on the treadmill so it's extremely difficult. I'll just do the Our Father and Hail Mary over and over again. But then I forget that I'm running and that just gets me to the point where I wanna go. So a lot of getting past the wall is almost trying to forget what you're actually doing, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's a lot of good intel. And Aaron was a really good runner in high school and still probably is a good runner if he wanted to get back in shape. What are some things that you would do when you're on like mile five of long day at practice to kind of continue to keep running and to try to prosper and get better? Yeah, it's kind of about it's kind of about focus. You have to you want to take your focus away from any pain you're experiencing, and you kind of want to you know you you try to focus on things like your breathing or things like you know I would I would honestly just like think about basketball while I was running. So I was thinking about something completely different. I was thinking about you know making a three or like making a tough layup or something because it's like you know that it gives you more takes your focus off of the pain that you're feeling, so you're able to you know just kind of push through it. That's, that's really good. So that's kind of the exact same thing, just trying to forget what you're doing. So one of the last concepts with mental toughness that I do with all my students is what I call autopilot. So this is something that I'm learning more and more. So when we stop thinking, our accuracy increases. So a lot of the times I'll try and catch my players counting makes during their workouts. If you're counting makes, then that means you're actually conscious about what you're doing. So then I asked them in return, have you guys ever driven a car, like say you're going somewhere that's an hour away and you get to your destination and you're like, how did I get here? Because you were daydreaming the entire time. That's because driving is muscle memory. Our shot is also muscle memory. Kids don't think we have the ability to not know if it went in or not, when in reality we do. Because we do the same thing when we drive. Ask yourself, did you guys brush your teeth this morning? Yes. Yes, I hope so. Uh, <laughs> when you brush your teeth, do you go in your head, side, side, up, down, up, down, or do you just do it? I actually count. No. <laughs> certain, certain. Are you time, serious? Yeah, certain time per each side. I want to get my teeth nice and white. Okay. Well, Sam is one of a kind. So <laughs> most people, when they brush their teeth, they're thinking about something completely unrelated to brushing their teeth. And that's because it's muscle memory. So that's another mental trick I have my kids try and do is try and practice autopilot, the ability to not think and just do. So Sam, you wanna dive in on what mental and mind over body means to you? Mental toughness, there's not one definition. It's kind of arbitrary. It's more of just a mindset than something that you can physically get. So it's not just something that you need to get through something physical. It's you need mental toughness to achieve any of your goals. And it's really all about your drive and the willingness to put in work, the willingness to stick to a schedule and working through the bad times. And one of the most important things is battling against adversity. Going along with what Sam said, I think mental toughness is definitely an intangible. It's something that, you know, you can't physically hold, but it's really important. But you can definitely still work on it through, you know, creating habits and things like that. Yeah, I think it's I think it's definitely something that you can work on still. Bob Knight's famous quote was mental is to physical as four is to one. It shows you how much important mental actually is compared to physical. And all these kids lift weights. You can lift for your brain. There's a bunch of exercise that you can do, and it's how important that actually is. Yeah, and being physically strong is totally useless if you're mentally weak mm -hmm. and you just quit. You really, life isn't easy and things are going to go wrong, so you need to stay mentally tough and don't let the bad times beat you. And it's all about really battling against adversity and against the odds when... You know what they say when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. And the bad times, that's when you that's when you really grow, you know. That's when if you're mentally tough through those times and you don't you know, you are able to learn and grow from it, that's when you're really able to get better at whatever you're trying to get better at. Exactly. Yeah, it's like there's nothing no such thing as losses. It's either 
winning or lessons really and being mentally tough is kind of taking those losses and really learning from them and knowing how you can improve from them and keep going even though you are uh, losing chase failure right the more we fail the more we learn exactly and one of my biggest role models really embodies the whole concept of mental toughness his name is Jocko Willink. He's a retired Navy SEAL commander, and he's an author and business consultant. And one of my favorite podcasts is the Jocko podcast, where he talks about the times uh, he's had in battle and how he's learned from them to succeed in other, other fields. He's really just a public figure who embodies mental toughness, and he's just a super motivational guy, and you can really learn from him. So I really suggest... Uh, listening to Jocko podcast if you're trying to improve your mental toughness and he really has that grind mentality and one of the things he's super famous for is he wakes up at 4 30 every morning uh, to work out to rise before the enemy and that's one big thing in mental toughness is sticking to a schedule and knowing that sometimes it's going to suck but if you keep doing it you will improve and you will succeed and a really famous quote uh, from Jocko on mental toughness is if you want to be tougher mentally, it is simple. Be tougher. Don't meditate on it. And I guess I have a question for both Aaron and Jack. So who are some people that have been kind of your role models in terms of mental toughness that you kind of look up to? Well, so the last podcast, I talked about Jimmy Butler and his struggle and rise to NBA stardom. But someone I have here is Tyler Hero, who he um, definitely faced a lot of scrutiny when he was when he made the decision to go to Kentucky after decommitting from Wisconsin you know a lot of a lot of people in Wisconsin were not big fans of him he was getting a lot of hate from uh student sections and all the places he played but he got you know, death threats right yeah, yeah yeah like ridiculous amounts of scrutiny but you know he really didn't let it bother him he focused on his own goals you have to be able to control what you can control you know you really can't control what other people are saying to you and if you're going to let it affect you that's actually going to you know hurt you in the long run but you know, he really was just focused on his own goals. And now, you know, we see how that turned out. He played in the NBA finals and he played really well. So that'd be one person I think of when I think of mental toughness. Yeah. If you're ever getting a lot of hate for something, most of the time it's a compliment and other people are just jealous that they're not in that situation. In terms of me, a role model that embodied mental toughness is probably my father, just because he, he battled cancer for, I think, 11 years. And the one thing that always stood out about is he never complained. Almost every other person on the planet would be complaining about their life and why me? Why am I in this situation? Why can't I have good health? But you never heard that come out of him because he never complained. And now this isn't necessarily a mind over body situation. He had to actually think about pushing past what he could do. But the ability to not complain when everything's against you is an insane mental toughness feat, in my opinion. So if I had to pick someone that embodied mental toughness, it would be my father for his ability to never complain. Yeah, and going to that, talking about not complaining, my role model, Jocko, he has a really famous video on YouTube called Good. And it's all about if you're able to say good after something, then you really shouldn't be able to complain because that means you're still alive and you can still improve and you can still battle. If anything bad happens after it, just say good and look at the positives from that and how you can learn. And that's really being mentally tough is not complaining and just seeing positives and grinding through adversity. It's kind of interesting why people complain in the first place because when someone complains to you, all you're thinking is your head is, I don't care. You know what yeah, I mean? Really. Like, we don't care about your problems. Just be grateful for what you have. Yeah, everyone has problems, and it's all about how you go through them. That's really the definition of mental toughness. And with mental toughness, you can really manifest anything that you desire. You just really got to grab the bull by the horns and grind to accomplish your goals. What do you guys think some specific examples of mental toughness are? Like I have one, I would say not retaliating to someone that trash talks you. That's mental toughness. When you're on the court, someone's trying to get in your head, they're clapping in your face. You be the bigger man and you don't uh, retaliate back. That's really being mentally tough because that means you're on your path to success and you're not letting the bad time, the bad people really get to you. I would say temptation is a huge thing that we all go through in life each day. An example of temptation as an athlete, if you got a really awesome looking cupcake in front of you or a bowl of chicken and rice, 
that's a perfect example of split second decisions that show how mentally tough you are when you're given a temptation. Yeah, you can just give in to that cupcake. It's just one cupcake. That's what my head would say every single time. But those temptation givens stacked up over time, they're going to show massive decrease in return from you giving into temptation every single time. Yeah, it's it's like it's about creating habits, you know, like doing something, you know, one time that you could consider mentally tough, you know, that's not just going to make you mentally tough. You have to be able to create these habits and, um, you know, make sure you're staying consistent with that to actually be mentally tough. Yeah, I think going on that with the habits, uh, sticking to your routine consistently is something that someone that exhibits mental toughness is really doing a lot, whether that's a workout routine or study routine, like if you have a paper due in three weeks, getting it done day by day instead of uh, procrastinating and waiting to the last minute to do it really exhibits mental toughness. And same with waking up every morning to go to your job or waking up every morning to go work out. Just sticking to that schedule and mentality of you, even though it could be bad sometimes, you're going to do it because at the end of the day, there'll be benefits to it is really mental toughness. Yeah. And the, when you, when you're creating these habits, you're chasing long-term goals. You're not, you're not chasing these short-term little, uh, moments of happiness, you know, would the cupcake probably make you happier in the short term than the chicken and rice? I mean, for most people, yeah, they would pick the cupcake. But when you're chasing these more important and, you know, things for the future, when you pick the chicken and rice, or and if you continue to create a habit out of picking the chicken, and ri I'm just using the chicken and rice as a metaphor. But <laughs> when you continue to choose the chicken and rice, you're gonna, you know, be more successful in the future. And those those successes are going to be more fulfilling. So that actually gets into something I preach, Aaron, which is always focus on your future self and not your present self. I'm actually going to write a book and no one can seal this title. It's going to be called Future You Will Thank You. Trademarked. Uh, <laughs> because what you write down for your goals, like if I have an eighth grade kid and their goal is to make it to the NBA, that goal is for their future self. So all these present makes and misses mean absolutely nothing. So when I get a kid that's getting frustrated about missing shots with good form, I'm telling them you have to focus on your future self. Present self in terms of your goals don't matter right now. Think about where you want to be in five years. Always focus on your future self. Yeah, and making goals and especially being passionate about them is really mental toughness. And being mentally tough is a decision and it's on you and you can just do it. It's something that you can really control and no one else can make you more mentally tough. It's really intrinsic and you have to do it. Such as you want to train harder in basketball, go train harder. You want to get straight A's, go get straight A's. You want to be able to talk to more people, stop being afraid to talk to people. And at the end of the day, you can control so much and it's all about your will to do so. So if you want to put in the work, and you want to get through the bad times and be mentally tough, then you can achieve anything and sky's the limit. Well, it's such an advantage if you can control all those things too. It's just up whether you're going to pull yourself to do it or not. You know what I mean? Yeah, and there's always going to be things you can't control. Like getting cancer, you can't control that, but what you make out of it is something you can control. And, and how you react exactly. to the situation. I think that goes back to another thing Jack likes to talk about with jumping in before you're ready. Mm -hmm. um, if you're, you know, if you're afraid to talk to people, if you go talk to someone, you know, you might like stutter or something, but who cares really? You know, that person's <laughs> not going to remember that. They're going to remember the things you say. You might fail at things, you know, but once again, that's, that's how you get better. Like, I'm sure there's things as a kid where we had super embarrassing moments, but there's such a little blink in time, we can't even remember them now. And like, that's how we gotta get out of, it's good to be in the moment and present, but there's certain moments where we get so wrapped up in our head, when in reality, in the big picture, you're not even gonna remember it in two weeks. Yeah, and something that you actually can control, and if you do control this, uh, you'll become very mentally strong is peer pressure and not falling into it, especially, we were all athletes in high school and there's a lot of peer pressure to 
party or do drugs or drink or anything like that will make you not only a worse student but a worse basketball player and it can be bad for your growth and brain growth and all of that so what do you guys think about peer pressure and what's some advice that you would give your students about not falling into peer pressure well again that goes right into temptation how mentally tough are you to take that night off where you can't be with your friends because they're doing drugs and drinking and we should do a survey or something because, well, did you make it all through high school without doing alcohol, Sam? Yeah, you didn't drink, right? Or did you? No. <laughs> well, so basically it was extremely tough for me because I lost a lot of friends because I didn't get into that scene during high school. I ended up getting into it college, obviously. But what did it for me is the love for basketball and the goals I had for myself. And that goes right back to future self. I knew what I wanted to be in three or four years and who I wanted to be in three or four years. Yeah, it sucked because I spent a ton of nights home alone shooting baskets when all my friends were together. And I remember that being a terrible feeling for me. But now sitting here with you guys doing a Close the Gate podcast, like this is really fun doing this right now. And I'm so thankful that I didn't end up giving into temptation for the path I'm going down now. And I guarantee you most of the kids that almost everybody would say they got into that scene way too early and they wish they could have gone back. In high school, you only get to be in high school for four years, you know? And it's when you're young, you're still growing, you know, you really, it's honestly some of the best times of your life and all the successes that you get with sports and school and all that stuff is so, so unbeatable and you don't find a lot of that in the world after you graduate. So you really have to just take advantage and high school sports is like such a good thing for kids. You know, you grow so much, you learn so much and I think it's really sad when some kids just don't, you know, they're not able to take advantage of that. You know, there's plenty of time to do all that stuff after you graduate, whatever you want to do, you know, you'll, you'll learn. And it's really just not all it makes up to be, I guess. Yeah. And I'll tell my story. I know when I was younger in high school, like freshman year, I was falling into some peer pressure, doing some stuff that I have learned from. I'm not mad that I did it because I've grown from it. And I think it made me who I am today, but I saw kind of the path I was going down and knew I didn't want to be like that and I stopped that I kind of changed my friend group I hung out with obviously these guys and some other my best friends still and I really knew I wanted to be a good student and I thought that would not be good for me and my grades and future and college and I also wanted to be the best I can in sports and I knew that there was always the not only the risk of getting coded and missing sports but also it's worse for you in terms of your muscle growth and stuff like that so I knew I looked myself in the mirror and said do I want to be like this and I said no and that's kind of I think where I got some of my mental toughness from is kind of changing my whole friend group and everything and resisting the temptation uh, of going out and doing stuff like that because I was on my grind and knew what I wanted to be like yeah and I'll, I'll kind of tell my my story. I got coded. I was going to just my, say that. My junior year, I, I was suspended for six games and it, you know, that was top five worst days of my life. You know, it's up there. I was devastated. You know, it was right on the day of our, our Parker Craig game. And, you know, you don't, you don't get that stuff back, you know, and it's just absolutely not worth it. Just like, it's just such a eye opening, you know, it, it really made me change the my my behavior and i'm i'm honestly i don't have any regrets i'm kind of lucky that that happened to me because you know it really made me put into perspective of what's really important well he got coded his junior year and i remember when it happened that like i was i remember my dad and i were mad but at the same time i was like well maybe he's gonna change a little bit for his senior year because if you would have gotten coded your senior year we would have been a lot lot worse and i think i would have been out for the whole season then too so that was exactly really, that stuff happens and mistakes happen uh you can't get too mad at yourself and look back at the past at the entire time because that happened you just got to reflect on it and know that all right i made a mistake and how can i learn from this and how can i change because you're a kid and peer pressure is a real thing and it gets to you because you want to have friends and you want to do what other people are doing, but you really got to stay mentally tough. And that's how you don't fall into it is, you know what you want to be like and staying mentally tough and being mentally tough is resisting all of that for the greater good of how you will benefit later. 
Well, and everything happens for a reason. I guarantee you Aaron got coded his junior year, so he prevented him from missing more time his senior year. I truly believe that every little detail, even in our days, happens for a reason. And that's what those learning mistakes are for. Talking about peer pressure again is if you're on a team, you kind of got to talk to your teammates and make sure they're not indulging in any of that activity. And you really got to hold your teammates accountable, create a culture that resists that. Because if you're falling into some of that peer pressure, your whole team's getting less mentally tough and you're not going to reach your goals as much because of all of that and some of the stuff that it'll bring. The other thing, you want to like surround yourself with people that have that similar drive and the same goals as you, you know, because that's that's going to be able to make you move forward as a team. You know, you want when your team is successful, you're going to be successful when you go and try and do things on your own and you don't care about what your teammates are doing. You know, your team's not going to have as much as much success. Other people's success does not diminish your own. You want to cheer for others' success rather than resent them for that. You know, that's wasted energy when you're resenting people for that. So comparison is the thief of joy, right? When you compare your success to other people, you're taking the joy out of everything you've done and worked for. And I can say this out of past experience with you, Aaron. Me and Aaron are very similar types of people and types of players in the way we we live our life differently but at the same time we're almost the exact same person and I always as a kid growing up I would compare myself to Aaron who was an extremely gifted and athletic athlete and I would always think in my head you know why can't I have that but at the same time I was given this drive because I didn't have this gifted athletic ability and now I'm the man I am today because of that. So just remember that everything happens for a reason. There was a reason you didn't get that athletic ability. And just remember to stop trying to compare yourself to even your best buddies. My Aaron was like one of my best friends growing up and I would constantly compare myself to him. And it took away that joy from what I already had. I should have been thinking about the things I do have, not the things that I don't. Yeah, and comparing yourself to others uh, can be good in some ways, such as like chasing, chasing a goal, like, oh, I want to be better than the previous person. But also comparing yourself to others and saying why him not me is really a sign of being mentally weak um for sure it's going back control the things you can control and their successes is something you shouldn't be upset about you should be glad about and just comparing yourself to others and is not a good way to grow and being mentally tough is kind of having the tunnel vision and say i'm going to improve myself and i'm going to improve our team not don't worry about other people and how they're doing relative to you. And you take those big steps of growth in your life. When you see someone else's success and you're like, wow, I'm actually really happy for them. And there's zero resentment there. You're at a whole new level with how good of a person you actually are. Well, and it's all about how you think about it, too. You know, if you're going to compare yourself to someone and you think, you know, they're just better than me and you're going to be upset about it, you're not going to that's not going to help you. If you if you're going to look at someone and you're chasing them or if you're trying to like the other person are trying to improve each other, you know, because I think me and Jack working, you know, together, playing countless one on one games, you know, we really I think we both made each other really good basketball players. And oh, for sure. that's not you know to say we were like comparing each other or we weren't like you know I wasn't trying to just be better than Jack you know mm -hmm. but we were you know working together to try to like you know we were holding each other accountable and trying to go for the 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 bigger goal so a big reason why I really wanted Aaron to be on this mind over body episode is because Aaron was a phenomenal runner in high school and I talked a little bit about this in episode two but what was your 800 time a minute 55 155 yep. yeah 155. So you have to have an insane amount of mental toughness and gift to run a 155 800. And if you don't know what an 800 is, that's half a mile. So that's an insane pace. Once again, goes back to goals and working towards goals. You know, when I, at the beginning of the season, my coach, every single season from my freshman to senior year, my coach would ask me what my goal was. And I think my sophomore year was to break two minutes in the 800. My junior year was to go to state. And then my senior year, my goal was to win state. I ended up finishing second at state. So I didn't reach my goal, but I don't think that if I didn't, if I didn't have that goal, I don't think I would have gotten anywhere near first place, you know? That's really good. It's a cliche quote, but you know, when you reach for the stars, you might not catch one, but you'll fall among them. 
It's exactly like that. Went back to, you know, me just every single workout I did, every single, um, you know, long run that I went on, it was, I had my goals in mind and, you know, there was struggle. There was like, I, I was in pain for a lot of workouts and stuff, but in the back of my head, I knew what I was working towards. So that helped me to keep on track and ultimately fall just short of my goal, which was still, you know, I think was a, I was happy with my result. So what was the actual thought process like on the second lap of the 800? What went through your head? Like, was it words? Was it pictures? Um, it goes back to when we were talking about you lose or you try to lose focus, you know, you mm -hmm. focus on something else. The way I ran my strategy, I wouldn't try to like lead the whole race. I would kind of try to wait behind and then kick at the end because I was a lot of the guys I ran against had a lot more endurance than me, but I might have been faster than them at the end. Okay. So I would kind of just watch the person's back in front of me. And I would just like focus in on their back. And then as soon as like I thought I was able to, I would just try to like sprint as fast as I could to the end. And, you know, a lot of people, when you see the light at the end of the tunnel, it makes you slow up or it makes you think I'm almost there. But you have to be able to sprint until you touch the final line. If you're, you know, a lot of people will slow up even, you know, five meters before you get there. But if you just sprint all the way through, you know, that it'll take off what, however many seconds. Tunnel vision. Yeah. And going back to Aaron's goal, you really got to have high expectations for yourself and you need something that you're going to strive for. And maybe that's even unattainable for you. But the process and uh, for reaching towards that goal is really how you get better. And to stay on that process and on that grind is kind of all of this podcast, what we've been talking about, mental toughness. And even though you might not reach that goal, having the high expectations will still make you work harder. And it's really crucial for self-improvement, becoming just a better person and better at your craft on, on whatever it is, whether it's sports or school or work, music or whatever you do, really. You touched on that a little bit there, Sam, too, is you have to have zero self-doubt about your goals. I'm sure, Aaron, you fully well believe that you could have won state when you were running the 800. If you don't truly believe that you can achieve your goal, there's no way you're going to get it. Like one of my kids, when I was doing their CTG productivity notebook for their goal, they wrote down a chance to go D1. If you're writing down a chance to go D1, there's no way you're going to get to D1 in the first place. You have to 100% believe that you're going to play a Division One basketball. There can't be 1% in the back of your mind. Well, I don't know if I'll be athletic enough or I don't think I can get there. Then, yeah, you're not going to get there. It goes along with having a positive mindset and being confident. Those are two of the most important things that you can have in life. If you have a positive mindset, you're able to push through the harder times. And if you have confidence, you're able to do more than, you know, someone that might not think they're able to do it. I have a fact written down here, and I don't have the website I got it off of, so you're going to have to take my word for it. But the average person has 60,000 thoughts in a day. 95% of those thoughts repeat throughout the course of the day, and then 80% of those repeated ideas are negative thoughts. So if you eliminate even just like half of those, you know, you're just so much more confident and positive. And I think that that was a really mind-blowing fact to me because you know, a negative mindset is one of the most deteriorating things that you can have. Yeah, and talking about confidence, uh, I learned this the other day. It's from Conor McGregor, one of my favorite athletes. A man with big intentions is a dangerous individual. And that's really true because if you really have those big intentions and those big goals, the sky's the limit. And if you're, especially if you're mentally tough, you can really attain those goals. That is what makes you dangerous because if you have those goals and you're staying on your grind, you will achieve them if you put enough work into it. Yeah. And like, you know, there's a difference between being cocky and being confident. You know, I don't see a problem with being cocky. I think that that's such a, you know, if you're cocky, you just know what you're able to do. Well, I think confidence is more of an internal thing and cockiness is more of an external thing. Cockiness is more about what other people see. If you're a cocky person, you're probably really conscious and concerned about what others think of you confidence is more of what type of thoughts go through your own head and what you actually think about yourself and that thought right there you said 80 percent of repeated ideas in your head are negative thoughts so majority of people in the world are not very confident by that stat and one thing i wanted to touch on too i just did this question with some of my students about in their notebooks how I give them a blank to answer. And the question was, 
household names are household names because they have zero blank blank. And a household name is basically you could walk into anyone's house and they'd know who that is. So LeBron James is a household name. Donald Trump, he was president. Everyone's going to know who Donald Trump is. But all these household names have zero self-doubt. And that's what I was just saying earlier. If you have a glimmer of self-doubt about your goals and where you want to be, that you're never going to get there. All those household names full well knew where they were going to be in 10 years, and now that's why they're there. Yeah, and speaking about doubt, one of the most crazy things in sports that probably in our lifetime was when the Cleveland Cavaliers, they were down 3-1 in the NBA Finals. And speaking about LeBron, I remember there was this time Clay Thompson said, I guess... I just had my feelings hurt. They asked, they were talking about LeBron and he just laughed. And that really showed that he's confident that they can win. And there was also a thing where they were asking him what he feels about the series being down 3-1. And he said, I'm confident because I'm the best player in the world. And a lot of people think that's cocky, but I mean, he wasn't wrong. And if he had any doubt whatsoever, they're not winning that series. That just goes to show if you believe something, you can achieve it. And that was being mentally tough on LeBron and the whole Cavs because no team had ever come back from down 3-1 and people were probably writing it off, it's over. And even before the series, the best regular season team of all time, they were probably saying they have no chance. They ignored all the hate and they had the tunnel vision even when down in the series to eventually come back and probably the craziest sports I've ever seen was that. And that's just a big highlight on maintaining that mental toughness. That's really good, Sam. You, I just want to make this clear to all the listeners because I had people ask me, Jack, are you a LeBron over MJ guy? And I think I talked about this earlier, but I'm MJ over LeBron. Sam, do you want to clarify if you're MJ over LeBron? or? Yeah, I'd like to. Um, I, LeBron's probably been my favorite player ever. I mean, that's the first NBA player I can remember watching. But I think MJ is better. I just like him more. I don't know. I like his confidence, and I like... The whole documentary they made, what, Last Dance, was awesome. And a lot of the stuff kind of that embodies just the goal of an athlete to be is kind of Michael Jordan. And what made me think he is probably the best is all the stuff that he took personal. And we always say it became personal for me. And then after that, we'll just dominate and no one could stop him. And he was just on a pedestal relative to the whole league and I just like Michael Jordan as a player better. I think he can do things better than LeBron, I guess. How about you, Aaron? <laughs> I'm all alone over here. I think LeBron's better. I think he I think LeBron is a talent that you know, we've never seen before ever. You know, he he his durability, he's how what is this his 17th year? Is that what it was? Yeah. And he's doing, you know, he's still being LeBron. You know, it's insane to watch. I've never, you know, you don't see people this old doing what he's doing and how he's able to keep his body as intact as he is now, you know, and he's still dunking on people. Like, it's just some of the stats and some of the things he's overcame, you know, is it's, I might be biased, you know, I didn't get to watch MJ, which I think if I got to watch both, I might say MJ, but I, did, I only got to watch LeBron. I also haven't seen the documentary. Really? No. Oh, so. Aaron, you got to watch that. Well, I'm kind of scared it's going to change my mind. So, but. <laughs> it, I honestly, if you haven't watched that documentary, I strongly recommend it because this directly correlates to what we're talking about now. MJ's mentality is on a whole nother level. He was, he was just a killer. He would look at something he wanted and he would just go get it. And that goes right back to zero self-doubt. That dude never had a doubt in his mind about anything he's ever done in his entire life and that's probably why he lost so much money gambling because every time he yeah. would gamble he was like all right i'm gonna win all this money and there's no right answer to this it's all opinion and they're two of the best players of all time and they're both role models of mine and i think every basketball player should really strive to be like both of them and going back to mj's mentality if you're our age there's probably heard of the mama mentality and Kobe Bryant, uh, rest in peace, but he was one of the most mentally tough people probably ever. There's a story of O.J. Mayo. He was on the Bucks, and when he was in high school, was at Kobe Bryant's camp, and he was a super good high school player. Uh, he didn't pan out in the league as much, but he was one of the top prospects in the entire high school. He was at Kobe Bryant's camp, and he asked Kobe if he could get a workout with him, and Kobe said, yeah, I'll pick you up at three. And 
OJ the next day was like, Kobe, where were you at? I was there at three. And Kobe says, I'm talking 3 a.m. <laughs> and that just really shows Kobe's mindset. And he's really on his grind. And I think he slept like four hours a night when he was playing because he wanted to be the best that he could. And he blocked his sleeping. So he'd sleep from 12 to 2. He'd work out from 2 to 4. And then he'd go back to bed 4 to 6. It was absolutely insane. Yeah. And there's a book called The Mama Mentality. And I would recommend that to all the listeners, uh, whether you're a basketball player or not. It just kind of shows Kobe's uh, career and his work ethic and how he grinded to become from an 18 year old. He averaged like six points a game his rookie year to become one of the best basketball players of all time and the work ethic that he put in to become that. So if you're ever um, looking for a book to read and to become better mentally and to become more mentally strong, I would recommend going to the library and trying to check out Mama Mentality. It's a quick read and it's super insightful. I also highly recommend listening to the book Relentless. I'm actually reading it right now. It's really, really good. And it's written by Kobe Bryant's mentor. And this guy is actually the real reason where Kobe got all his mental hacks and tricks. But one quote that's really good from this book, it goes, the second your mind says done, your instincts say next. And Kobe literally embodied that quote right there. The second he was done with his sprints, he said next one. The second he was done taking his 1,000th shot, he said next one. He was always ready to keep improving, and it was just a nonstop grind. He was never satisfied. So that's another book recommendation. I strongly encourage you guys all to read if you're looking for mental toughness and motivation relentless. Yeah, and another thing, talking about Kobe, uh, we could talk for hours on Kobe and how crazy he was and mentally and physically. But there's a famous time, I think it was the 09 NBA Finals, and they were up 3-0 against the Magic, and a reporter asked him how he felt, and he was like, what do you mean, how do I feel? Job's not done. So he was really about it and didn't have too much confidence and knew that his goal was just the next game, the next game, and he wanted more, and he wasn't going to celebrate early because he hasn't re reached his goal yet. No, him and MJ are in a category of their own in terms of killer mindset, and they're both they're both kind of different in a way. Kobe's more of a killer in terms of his work ethic, like, I'm going to outwork you, and MJ's more of a killer, like, I'm going to score on you anytime I want. You know what I mean? And Kobe could definitely do that. I'm just saying... They both had that killer mindset, but in different environments. Yeah, MJ's confidence was a lot different. It's almost like he's like, what are you going to throw at me next? Are you, are you kidding? Like, he kind of got offended. You would even try to stop him. Uh, there's a story in the doc about Reggie Miller, and I don't remember exactly what was said, but MJ referred to himself as Black Jesus. Oh. And, like, that's how good he was, and that's how, uh, that's how confident he was and uh, mentally tough. What was that story in the last dance he shoot he made up some story of a critic saying something about him so he could motivate himself to destroy him in the next game do you remember that yeah i do and i also remember a story when Carmelo malone got the mvp over him he was like he was mad and he was like all right that's fine i'll just get the trophy at the uh the finals and he, he did that with Charles Barkley, too, didn't and he? And Charles Barkley. Yeah. And if you guys are looking for any more motivation, I find a lot of motivation from veterans. And there's two really good books written by ex-Navy SEALs. You'll probably hear us talk about this book over and over, but Make Your Bed, really short read. Uh, William H. McRaven, he was the, an admiral in the Navy. It can really change your mindset in a variety of ways and just about anything in life that you go through. And... I would go check it out. It's only like 100 pages. It's a super easy read. And it's really about just his mental toughness and how he looked at things positively through Navy SEAL training. And there's a book called No Easy Day. It's also written by an ex-Navy SEAL about uh, the Bin Laden raid and how he kind of trained for that and how it showed examples of drive and how mental toughness leads to his physical toughness and his ability to do some of the crazy stuff that they do. One of the biggest quotes in Navy SEALs is the only easy day was yesterday. And that's just something that demonstrates mental toughness because there's always gonna be something harder and you're always gonna have to go through something bad. You gotta be mentally strong consistently to 
get done what you want to get done. Well, yeah, you have to keep challenging yourself to grow. If you just do the same thing over and over, you're going to stop growing. Yeah, and it's like about you can't eliminate weakness. You just have to learn how to deal with it. Talking about confidence, when you're when you're confident, you try to succeed. And when you are not confident in what you're doing, you're trying not to fail. So uh, something really important is that you have to work toward when you're doing a hard drill. If you mess up, that's how you're growing. But when you're trying not to fail, when you're trying not to push yourself hard enough to fail, you're not really getting getting anything out of that. You're just trying not to fail because you're not confident in your abilities. That's really good. There's a huge difference in those two things right there. Yeah, it's like there's a famous quote. Uh, if you want to win more than you want to breathe, that's when you'll, you will succeed. <laughs> and that just kind of embodies what Aaron said. You guys want to do a quick speed round? Sure. I got an easy one. If you boys could turn the sky a different color than blue, what color would you turn it? Pink. Why? I was going to say that. It'd be like Tatooine in Star Wars Oh. at night with the two sun setting. And Isn't it orange? It's like orange pink, salmon. Okay. I don't know. It's blue salmon. during the day, but in the whole afternoon, it's always like that. And I'm a big Star Wars guy. That's that's really good. I think I would turn it. I I think I would turn it um, green. I don't I don't really know why. I was gonna say pink. Sam kind of stole yeah. mine, but I think I would turn it green because don't the SpongeBob. Well, that'd be cool. Oh, you could have the little flowers up there too in the sky, right? Like SpongeBob. I was thinking, <laughs> what's that one episode where him and Patrick are on the ship? You know what I'm talking about? Know. All right, never mind. That was well, useless. Doesn't the ocean, like, doesn't that come from, like, the color of the ocean, doesn't that come from the sky? Because I think water's actually just clear, you know? But, like, you might be right. I think it, the sky turns it blue, so it'd be cool if the oceans are, like, green or something, you know? Why is the sky blue? Can you guys let us know that? Who uh, cares? Yeah. <laughs> Some, just control what you can control. <laughs> All right, oh, I got a yeah. question. What do you guys listen to pre-game, uh, like pre-basketball game? Oh. I'll say mine. Um, I don't play sports anymore, but like pre-lift, I'm always listening to either Metallica or the Notorious B.I.G. My, this isn't necessarily pump-up music, but my favorite type of recent artists or group of people that I like to listen to a lot is called AJR. They make really good music that's different than a lot of other people, in my opinion. Another reason I like Jimmy Butler, he listens to country music before his games. I think that's awesome. <laughs> I like country music. I don't think I would listen to it before a game, though. So I guess I, I listened to pretty much anything. Whatever was on the playing on the speaker in the locker room or whatever, I was getting pumped. So That's good. What was your favorite memory throughout high school sports? Okay, that's, that's easy for me. So I would say either my East buzzer beater in the dungeon or the one at home in a kind of walk. I don't know how to pick between the two, so I would say those. Yeah, those are both fun. Those are probably my favorite basketball memories. Memory overall, I would say either beating Parker senior year. For that football? Was, for football, that was really fun. Or beating Verona for football. What was was that a big game? Verona, uh, yeah, Craig hadn't beat Verona in like five years, and they were really good, and we just we beat them. It was just a really fun game. All right, once again, thank you guys for listening to the CTG Hoops podcast. We definitely want you to let us know how you liked it. Give us critique. Me, Jack, and Sam, we'd always, you know, we always want to grow and we want to know how we can be better at this. And I just wanted to say, this is what Jack's doing here with CTG Hoops. This is stuff that you really can't find too many other places. It's, it's very important. This stuff is a lot of stuff that I really wish I knew in high school, and, you know, it's all free. All the social media pages, if you haven't checked them out, uh, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, follow all of those at CTG Hoops. There's daily posts on there. You can always contact us on any of those social media pages as well. Give us reviews on the podcast. You know, we'd love to hear from you guys. And definitely, we love as many uh, requests and questions uh, as you can give us for new topics to talk about so thank you guys very much for listening i'm coach aaron we out